The Bar Group, raising the bar in real estate. Your Lake Highlands, Lakewood, Preston Hollow Pros. You can find them at thebargroup.com. Unparalleled customer service for your real estate needs. The Bar Group. Coming through. see you hi now when so when i'm when i'm turned this way all the time i'm not ever looking into the camera right well that's the camera right there i know okay well look into it see right there see uh, perfect i know <laughs> but when i'm answering you i don't look at you you can yes you can you can all right so hi welcome to uh the first show of the pickleball show with curtis reese uh, of the year of 2023, and this guest I have here is um, <laughs> let me let me look at my notes here. There's a, she gave me like a list of a million accolades that she has, and she has a lot. <laughs> believe me, uh, one of them would be let's see here. Uh, my next guest here is going to be well. Here we go with a long list of awards and accolades, but here's a few. She's a basketball star, correct? Check. Right. Sung in the national anthem in 2022, right at, at the, the se- national senior games. Senior games. You won a silver medal, right? right. She won. I'd see that she also sings and dances, but we're not going to do that right now, <laughs> right? Right. Oh, you mean I don't get to tap dance? No, and, not right now. And tap dance and sing and play the piano. No, because that and, means I have to do. It and I don't want to do that. So look at this. This is KC. My, you probably can't see. There's your card. You got a, is that a boa. Uh huh. Nice. She's got a boa. She's got KC. My, get up, get out, get your move on right here. Singer songwriter. She is a singer songwriter, and she's also an author. An amazing book here from her husband that she finished. That we'll get to that later. It's called "The Last Train Out" by Rudy Seymour, transcribed and edited by K. Lewis Seymour. Amazing story here. Well, let's get to it here. Oh my right? goodness! Oh, she's yeah. all primping here. Yeah. Calm down. <laughs> You're a lot better looking than me. Yeah. So, let's talk about this. So, when did you get into pickleball? I think it's been about 11 or 12 years ago. Okay. Yeah. So I um, actually heard about it. I couldn't find any place to play. Uh-huh. Finally, yeah. I heard about uh, Ropes and Ranch, and I thought, well, I can't drive all the way out there, so I'm just not going to go there. <laughs> so then um, but a couple of months later, I live in DeSoto, and I was over in the Cedar Hill gym of uh, looking at another program, and I heard ping, 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 and I thought, what is that (laughs) sound? And sure enough, I go to the gym, I look in, and guess what they're playing? Pickleball. But were there nets or were there jugs? Were there there jugs or nets? Uh, No nets, nets. Uh uh-huh, yeah, Uh yeah. And so they had three courts going, (laughs) and since I had played tennis for 30 years, Uh, I was missing that. Yes. Uh, so anyway, so I was so excited about it. So I came home. Well, I asked the the administrator what when that when they played, and he <laughs> told me. And so he said, "Well, come out. We have some demonstration paddles." And so I said, "Well, I can I go out there now?" <laughs> So I mean, waste no time, you know. So so I did that, and then and then it just kind of went from there. Then I went to, <laughs> then I started playing at Louisville, yes. and then I met Dominic Greco, and yes. he became my mentor. And then so, I, for our listeners, yeah, let me get this straight. So you were at a gym, or you were, and you looked over, and you saw there was this pinging, and you saw a bunch of people hitting a ball. Were they young people or old people? They were, um, no? well, they were like 50, 60. Yeah, they were young yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what Kay really did was she goes, um, are these people on their meds? Because what are they doing out there with that ball? <laughs> that's, that's right. What, that's what she really did, I'm telling you. No, I'm that, just kidding. That's right. But you're like a lot of people. You're like, you, you've played a lot of tennis. Right. And you just, it just kind of gets monotonous and your body's like, I'm bored, right? Yeah. And then you see pickleball, it's like... I'm back. Right? Well, that's true. And and in pickleball, I mean, just from starting out, people say, well, what is that game? Yes. And then all of a sudden you get out there and you're so addicted to it. Uh-huh. And I think the reason you're addicted to it is because you get to hit so many balls. Yes. Yes. You get to hit. There's action. There's mm-hmm. action coming. This court is mm-hmm. smaller. 
I know everybody knows this, but I'm no. telling you, I'm do telling it. No, you, do the, it. the court is smaller. You get more balls. You might hit an, you might hit an ace or a great slam overhead one <laughs> second, and then you might hit it out, you know, in the stands the next. But guess what? You get to come <laughs> right crap back. Out of the ball. You get to come right back and hit a great shot, you know, right down the line, you know, yes. past your opponent, and so it's just so addictive mm -hmm. because it's just there's so much action. To yes. it, you know. It's very stimulating, right? It's very, very stimulating. And you don't want to leave, and you can't wait until you get there again. So what, what Kay just said was she was hitting people with the paddle so she could stay on the court, right? Right. I'm just kidding. <laughs> right. <laughs> I like that's that. true. Well, that's, that's, that's good. So you like to play, or do you like to play singles? Because you can play singles with nope. one half. Don't or you like play to play singles. doubles? you like to play mixed? What I you always like? played um, mixed doubles and doubles tennis, mm -hmm. so this kind of was the same thing. But in pickleball, we didn't play very much singles because mm -hmm. uh, they needed the court. You know, you can put four, yes. four people on there mm -hmm. with doubles or mixed doubles, mm -hmm. and so there wasn't very many singles going on. And I didn't play singles mm -hmm. tennis anyway, so. Yeah, a lot of bad it, calls. It, yeah. People can't get the balls. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right, right. So, no, I would end up in tournaments. I did play and end up in a tournament in Oak Cliff Country Club, mm -hmm. and there was a... a uh, 18 year old that had just finished her first year of college and so it uh, obviously it was a it was uh quite uh interesting match yes. zero zero you know yes. but she was so nice she mm -hmm. still you know oh yeah but anyway but i said well that's the end yes. of my singles right you get, there you, get, you know yeah. yeah but we had a big <laughs> laugh about it you know and, and so anyway but but now there's a uh, pickleball is just so addictive, you know, and uh, I play doubles and mixed doubles. So with your background and what people, I mean, this is uh, the truth. I did a lot of mixers throughout my years at, at, at Brookhaven, also various clubs, Lost Kalinas. And I know for a fact she came out to one of my, to one of my, <laughs> my, my, my mixers. I know it. And I can see the lady's name, but I can't think of her right now. But I taught her, I taught her at TCD at Brookhaven. But anyway, I know I've met Kay before. So after those years of playing all that tennis and pickleball now, what would you say, like, at your current, where you're at in your journey with pickleball and tennis, what do you feel like is the most enjoyable thing about at, at being able to play at the age you're at, like the age my parents are at? Just that being out there exercising, or what do you think is the best thing about it? <clears throat> well, I guess what I can really say about that is that I've never stopped playing sports. Okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> I've never stopped playing sports. Mm -hmm. I played uh, I played basketball in high, junior high high school mm -hmm. and I have kind of a funny story and help me get back on track. I will. I will. I promise. Uh, but my dad was principal when I was 5. Uh, he was principal of the high school and girl high school girls basketball coach. So mm -hmm. I kind of grew up <laughs> in in the gym. Mm -hmm. And and then uh, he became superintendent, and as I got older, I had the keys to the gym. Nice. So, you know, the only... That's where you started playing pickleball. That, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying, back Damn. to our Sorry. original conversation, Sorry. is that, oh, and one thing, I couldn't turn the lights on, you know, oh, you, you, <laughs> I, I could play in the dark. Uh, but I couldn't turn the lights on yeah. because the school, the taxpayers had to pay the electric. Yeah. So anyway, but those little bitty gems that we had and those little screens, you know, that, that yeah. the the sun would come through yes. and it would be shining like you were yeah. in jail or yeah. something. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and I would play, I would be out on the court until I just could not see anymore. But the, in answer to your question, mm -hmm. back to that, no, I've never stopped playing sports. Wow. I even got thrown off of a little league uh, boys little league team because mm -hmm. my hat fell off and the other coaches my hair fell out and they realized that I was a girl and so I got kicked off of the what? team. What? Are you serious? <laughs> I'm serious. That's yeah. supposed to happen in like a movie, yeah, not I like know, in real life. I know. Oh, I've had so many great fun things, you know, <laughs> in sports. But anyway, but sports and music has followed me all of my life. And, me too. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it's just, uh, yeah, it, it's a it's a great sport. And I never, like I said, I never stopped playing. I played high school. I did actually got a, a scholarship to Wayland, mm -hmm. and uh, but then I got a music scholarship to, to McNeese State University McNeese, in mm -hmm. Lake Charles. Mm -hmm. And so, and then I was saying, 1950, 
eight when I graduated. I was thinking, okay, music or women's girls basketball at when I was 18 years old and 58, well, that'll tell you. Yeah. I mean, I was thinking, okay, now what is what good is that? Go- what good mm. is basketball going to do for me? <laughs> so I took the music, th- so I was real, real happy See, about music. that, and I played in orchestra and Isn't beat all, all the that? guys out first chair. First uh, first, chair. I mean, first line trumpet during marching season. <laughs> You're all beating them out. <laughs> but anyway, but I still entertain and I still play. And anyway, so, so. with so with your pickleball right now, what? <laughs> show us your weapons, your paddles oh, of choice. Okay. What paddles are you using here? This is a Bantam paddle tech. Paddle tech. Okay. And it's a special made. Thank you, Scott. Scott, who? Scott, your uh, Scott the rep, Paddle uh-huh. Tech. Yeah, What's his he's last the name? owner. Uh huh. Well, Scott, what? Yeah. What's his last name. Well, I wish I could remember right this second. <laughs> That's all right. This Paddle Tech. There yeah. we go. Look at that. Yeah. Thing. But anyway, but I love it, and uh, I do play with others. But, of course you do. What's but, the other one? Uh, this is one that I play oh, with. Oh, nice. That was I won that at the Texas. Oh, Engage. Nice. Yeah. That's yeah. A paddle there from the Engage Championships. Yeah. Was that was that last year? No, well, this was the first one they held. This was about three or four years ago. Oh, the one in Capel. Like, yeah, Capel, right, Wagon Wheel. Capel, uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, we had Sylvia on. Do you know yeah. that? Sylvia yeah. was on our show. Yeah. Did you see that? She's Very on the show. Good. Yeah. So anyway. But, She's got Engage and Paddle Tech. Yeah. I like those. So I'll tell you, so we've got this, this, this sweatshirt on here. It says USSP. Tell us a little more about the U.S. Well, Senior Pickleball. This is kind of, I'm not sure what they call it, but I call it. A spinoff of SIPA, mm-hmm. SSIPA, senior, SIPA, senior, senior, sexual, senior, whatever it is yeah. for the yeah, pickleball association. It's a lot. Yeah, and so this is a spinoff. It's supposed to be for the older players, mm-hmm. and since I am, will be eighty three. Since she's eighteen at heart. <laughs> <laughs> and she's whatever age. But anyway, but it, it's tournaments just for, uh, now they, they're saying 50 and over. Mm-hmm. But um, I would really like to encourage all of you 80s out there, don't stop playing. Don't stop playing. Come play with us because we need competition in 80s because a lot of times we get there and we may have one or two 80s teams and then we end up having to play the 60s like a 1 to 15. So get yourself, all, get up, get out, and get, get your move on. Yeah, Sh- get your yes. move on right here. Get your this. move on. Get back on the pickleball court. We need you. We need you. And you need it. You just don't know it. That's right. You just don't Dude. know it. But, Look yeah. at that right there. Right. But keep, keep yourself active. Just yes. keep yourself active. She's right. And doing something you love and that you're passionate about, and then you'll always have a great life. She keeps beating me to all these questions. Like one of my nice questions was, oh. of all your endeavors in, in the sport, <laughs> what would you like to do? And your current fo- focus is getting 80-plus-year-old people playing more. Right. Because she's tired of beating the crap out of 50- and 60-year-old, yeah. right? <laughs> I thought that's oh, what you just said. I, I love you. I didn't know I loved you so much. No, but, <laughs> but be honest, seriously, getting getting you up, up and active. No, seriously. that that is really that is really true. Yeah, mm-hmm. but but yeah, it's just, if you'll just if you'll keep going, you know, and keep playing, doing what yep. you love. Well, that that passion thing is a whole other thing we could talk about mm-hmm. about living your passions and your you, you know, come back all and of those tell things. Stuff yeah, one day. So let's talk. Do a quick thing of your family, your your, your kids. Oh, like, how, okay. Uh, like I, I have your... uh, I have uh, I had one sister and three brothers, uh-huh. and uh, only my sister and one brother is still alive. And my dad was superintendent of schools down mm-hmm. in Southeast Texas, so it's huge basketball country down there, mm-hmm. and that was back in the days of the little Class B schools. <laughs> And uh, so, but we we could have we could have won district, but and Winnie, I went to Finette, Texas, is just out of out of Beaumont, mm-hmm. and but in Winnie, Texas, ten miles down the road, uh, they had a six foot tall girl, and yeah. her name was Honeycut. I'll never forget it. And so she be, that team beat us out of 
district every year <laughs> that I was in high school, and she was the same age, but she could shoot, she could shoot, and she, anyway, so, but anyway, but I grew up down there, yeah. and he was superintendent of schools down there for a yeah. long time, and uh, so and I graduated, went to, went to, went from Sorry. first grade to 12th grade there, mm. still have a lot of friends, mm. the ones that are still with us. <laughs> And uh, it, their families, we all knew their families and spent the night with each other. And it was a whole, it was mm -hmm. a family raising each, uh, mm -hmm. raising, raising all yeah. of us kids. Yeah, know? that's a lot, a big lot of kids. Yeah. So you were kids, said you have daughters, they here in, in Texas? I have daughters. Is that, yep. Daughters. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I have three daughters. Um, Anne is just turned 61. I don't think we can say their ages, but okay. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Okay, Anne, Anne, Karen, and Erica. Good. And they all live in the area, and Good. I have three grandchildren, nice. and the youngest one is 21. Nice. No, grand, no great grandkids. So, <laughs> anyway, so. So, I got uh, down here. What's this Granny Globe, Globe Trotter thing you got here? Well, the Granny here. Globe Trotter thing came about when, when I started an organization called Basketball and Fitness for Senior Women. Yeah. It was, and it was obviously to promote basketball. And I had read about uh, the Texas Senior Games mm -hmm. and the program of basketball. So anyway, so I contacted the person that was in the newspaper and said, what is it? So I or had an organization called Basketball and Fitness for Senior Women. So what we did to promote is that we went around to all, we went to, we did halftime shows at mm -hmm. the Mavericks. We did yeah. Denton, Texas University, mm -hmm. uh, some of the major high schools, some of the big tournaments, Duncanville tournament. Yeah, I, come on, I know some of you listeners have seen her on the halftime at the Mavericks uh, games yeah. with Brittany Globetrotters, come uh, on. Uh, that was you? Yeah. That's awesome. And so we did we did halftime shows and we we introduced the youngest one and then when we got up to the eighty and here's Lillian Rudd, <laughs> eighty two years old, and by that time the crowd was, you know, yay, you know, here are all these old ladies out there playing basketball, you know. We looked really hot. I mean, excuse me, we looked really good, you know. So anyway, but then we broke then we did our little circle. Uh -huh. You know, we did our little circle and did our little tricks and all that and then broke up. Yeah. And then played three on three on each end, <laughs> and it was just great fun. But it was a great way we picked up a lot of basketball players uh, through that, you know. So uh, I was real lucky to get inducted into the. That's the next thing. Yes, the, please tell to us to the yes. Hall of Fame, and it has to do with this. What's Hall of the Fame? The Texas the Texas State Senior Games Hall of Fame. Nice. And really, I always thought that the reason that I that. I got that honor. It's because I was always promoting, promoting, promoting mm -hmm. senior games, not just basketball. Mm -hmm. There's a whole, but right? everything. Anytime I met somebody, you know, that I thought was 50 or over, mm -hmm. I said, well, now I know you're not old enough <laughs> to play senior uh, games yet, but there's this wonderful program, and let me tell you about it, you know. <laughs> So uh, I I think they got tired of me and just said here give her this no, give her this uh, Hall of up. Fame and hush her up a while you know but no I, I, no I would, I would say that that you, know, you said in, in all encompassing but I I would say that that with our show today a lot of the things we I wanted to touch was obviously your story uh -huh. and well the last piece we'll add here in a second was just your journey through being being in Texas and. And uh, watch, thinking people were off their medications or doing some type of drugs. You saw oh a bunch of pickleballs in them, but you know, yeah, I get it. And then you learned how to play pickleball in the barn. We just didn't know it yet back in, you know, you were growing up, right? Right, <laughs> right, right. But right. my last, my last question is, is this last train out? I wanted to ask you about this, this, this book right here. Um, you wanted to tell me about it? Yes, I do. Um, this book. Is about my husband who passed away two and a half years ago. He was a refugee during World War II, and he, the U.S. Army, fed those starving kids toward the end of the war, and he, they put him on the last train out. That's the name of the book, the last train out. And but they thought that the kids were going to come back, but then the Russians moved in into Yugoslavia. He was German, but living in Yugos, born in Yugoslavia. And so then the Russians came in and it turned communism. And so his mother died in concentration camp. And anyway, 
Um, so he was just a, a little kid, you know, at the end of the war. Anyway, he, his uncle found him and helped him go to school, and you had to, you had to really jump through a lot of hoops to get to come to the U.S. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, so he came over as a displaced person because mm -hmm. he didn't have a country. And so I wrote his I wrote yeah, his book. Tell him that. Tell him what yeah, happened. Yeah. Yeah. I, okay. So I actually was writing my book. Is that what you wanted to? Yeah. And then you yeah. said you wanted to tell yeah. you what happened with that. Book. Right. And so I was writing my book. Get up. Get out. Get your move on. And he started having. Uh, he had Lewy body's dementia, which is Alzheimer's and dementia of all different things. <coughs> anyway, so he. So I put all of my stuff aside and started, took all of his notes and <laughs> gave him, I gave him the top line here by Rudy Seemeyer. And then I said, transcribed and edited by K. Lewis Seemeyer. So I just took all of the stories that he had told all of those years <laughs> and, <laughs> and it's about him coming to the U S and how he felt when he saw the Statue of Liberty and what a proud, proud, proud American he was. And he was, um, he was just very patriotic, and he's buried at the National Cemetery, and he had some special honors. Now give me my and, copy back. Yeah. <laughs> but but one, one of the things that I think one of the nicest things for our family was that I got the book published in time mm -hmm. to get it to where he got to go to some of the book reviews. Mm -hmm. And no one knew that he had Alzheimer's or was was, you know, challenged, yeah, yeah, challenged that way. And so they would, they would ask him questions and then he would, he would say, oh yeah, that's so-and-so. And then he'd start blinking, you know, like, like think, blinking mm -hmm. and thinking, we called it, you know, yeah. and I would, then I yeah. would just say, oh honey, I think that's when, yeah. I think that's when y'all were so-and-so mm -hmm. and so-and-so, yeah. you know, so, and so oh yes, he'd, he'd say like that, you know, yeah. well then the audience yeah. knew, then we did the Dallas Book uh, Library mm -hmm. and all of that and had a huge group of people there and yep. everything. So people knew right away then that he had you know, some challenges yep. mm -hmm. and then, but he still got to go to see all that. And I put him out front <laughs> and he got all the questions until, you know, it just kind of worked as they say now organically yes. that, that the questions then I got to help him answer. She's like perfect. She's like my, she's reminds my mom the way she told me she's like <laughs> organically, but organically we're going to close the show. But the reason <laughs> we're going to do this is because this is how I kind of planned it. Because I know a lot about Mrs. Seymour more than she knows in a good way. And we touched on, the number one thing we touched on was for you, you, you young 80, 90 year olds yeah. is to get, get up, because you say it. Yeah. Get up. Well, and I wrote the song, well, get up, get out, I didn't and say get sing your it. I said move sing. on. <laughs> Singers always have to sing. Get up, get out, and get your move on. Give me that paddle. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, but there's also a song in there. It's yes. called... Basketball boogie, okay. but I'm changing the words to pickleball, pickleball boogie. boogie. You see, this works right so, here. So there's wait, there's more. Okay. <laughs> oh, there's more coming. Okay. Yeah, well, there's more coming. Right. I'm sure we'll have some yeah, on again. But yeah. but listen, for those of you that might want to reach out to you, some doesn't matter how young or old they are. Sure, how would they contact sure. you? Uh, email or phone, uh, or whatever you want to provide. We'll go out to the names okay. of people. Okay, uh, my email address is K C Meyer K A Y S E A M A Y E R at msn dot com, and you can text me at four six nine six nine three seven five six five. I'd love to hear from you. I'm also a singer and entertainer. <laughs> so if you need some music for a special party. Oh, excuse me. I'm not supposed to be promoting that. I don't I? need this any stuff on that. This is pickleball. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and I can be reached for what it's worth at <laughs> Curtis at ReeseRagonSports.com. And any questions, you want to come on the show, you want to sponsor the show, you want to make fun of me on the show, reach me there. Or take a listen to all of our vocal, our vocal shows we have here. We have like five million, but no, they're all good, and they're all for any mood you're in. And thank you, Kay. Would you have to come back on at some point in time to the show? I loved it. I hope you'll have <laughs> me back. I'll sing you another song. Oh hell no, you're not coming back on. <laughs> Thanks. Have a good day. We'll see you. Thank you. Thank you. Coming through.